So in ethics session again we have uh, mainly pointed out is about right and wrong of uh, some behavior. So it is exactly goodness and badness. So this is, this is not absolute, some people might consider good, some people might consider bad, but what most people consider as good and what is good for uh, most people is what defines ethics. Okay. So what we will do is, uh, let us do a couple of, I hope you can all read this. Please uh, read this and then I will reset the hand setting, do not raise your hands now please. I will reset it again. So, read this, come up with an answer for yourself, please write that answer down for yourself and then discuss with your partner. Okay. I will give you about 5 minutes to do this, please write it down yourself first, think, pair, share, you can try this in your classrooms as well. You do it alone first, then do it with pairs and then we will discuss in the class. So I will read the uh, statement once more for you. So this is regarding a project that you are going to take. So you have a discussion with a company that is interested in having you as a consultant to evaluate a new product they are developing. However, during the discussions they drop hints about how your strong support of this product would make them market leaders and lead to a long research partnership with your group. Okay. So your, the company has told you in uh, subtle words that they need your support which means they need your concurrence and that will uh, make them market leaders. Now, the question is, is uh, do you see any problem with this? This again I am telling you there are certain things which you can argue both ways. This is a situation where you can argue both ways. It is not, the answer is not yes or the answer is not no. Many of you might feel yes, many of you might feel no. So just think for yourself, there is nothing uh, correct or wrong about your thing. We just want to present this discuss various opinions and then let us see if we can conclude on something. So first of all to yourself you write an answer, do you see a problem to this, yes or no and then discuss with your partner why you think it is yes or no. Sita Ram Bhai, Naranji Patel. So the first uh, problem which I see is Moreover, the company which is insisting me to join for the product, maybe they, the company having a notice that some other another company will approach me for the same product to launch. So they are insisting me to collaborate or to work in the area for the product. Or the another is they might have a confidence in me, so they are using my knowledge for their launch of the product. So there are two aspects, whether they are in a notice that someone will approach me or some another company will approach me for the same product they are going to launch or the another they are having a confidence in me. So uh, this might uh, or a certain person will work for the same. Okay, now uh, let me, so this is like a research grant, okay. Now suppose the company, uh, which, uh, which city are you in? Pardoli, Surat. Surat, okay. So Surat say there are so many dye companies or diamond companies or whatever, okay. So they come to you and ask you, you collaborate with me, okay, and I will pay your research. You want money for research, say government is not giving you money. They are going to give money for your research so that you can buy chemicals, you can pay your PhD students and so on. It is a research money that they are, I am not telling they are bribing you, okay. They are not bribing you, they are giving you research money. In return, they are asking you, you give them favorable recommendation for the product. I mean, do some research on the product and you write it in your journal paper that it is good, it works very well and so on, 
okay they are not saying you give a advertisement in uh, a ztv or something you write a research paper in which you say that if i do use this product it comes out to be nicely or something like that some favorable work from you in return they are going to fund your research okay so in this context the question is will you or will you not accept what is the reason so first i request all of you to answer the question yes i will accept no i will not accept and this is the reason let me go to the next uh, college uh, jawaharlal nehru national college yeah i will not accept this because uh, there is a selfish condition that because it benefits him is going to come to me and the second is uh, there is the acceptance or offer coming because he feels there is a benefit to the company he would not have come to me if uh, i would not have added value so i feel uh, that there is a selfish motive and a condition to any negotiation does not make sense okay so let me respond to you assume that i am the company and i am coming to you See, you want funding okay i am giving yeah. you funding yeah can you negotiate in a way that you get the funding but you make it clear that you are not going to write any special favor if if the product really comes out to be well maybe you can say but you don't want to tell it is there a way that you can negotiate out of this and say that okay but you need a funding now your your government has stopped giving funds for research you have, government has said that no. 90% of the funding has to come from industry i will give only 10% what will you do i i would say my creativity is what i can deliver but if there is a condition that it is making them a market leader that's why they are coming to me so they should accept me on my face value for my knowledge and the result is secondary it's not in my control whether the customer would accept the product or not so if it comes with a rider i will be able to clinch the deal but if they come to me with a very ethical uh, approach to saying you are intelligent you are knowledgeable we want your service uh, it it looks transparent so probably i would put across my usp of knowledge uh, to market my case yes but uh, let's say that all that is given now you do want money how do you best negotiate the deal without uh, giving in to their demands you do want money it's not that you say no to a, um, many private companies may have the same issue if not a company b will come with a similar thing but you cannot say no to everybody how do you best negotiate out of this no i would look at angel investor i would look at uh, venture capitalist but not submit myself to people who want to exploit but i i would be very transparent okay very well, good my Thank product you. should speak my knowledge should speak and 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 not the other way around okay thank you so let me just uh, because if i am good people are going to come to me uh, and and my intelligence okay thank you very much so let me just point out that uh, Uh, as somebody has uh, said now uh, please don't take that that is the only answer okay so many others uh, might have a different answer and please respect that for what whatever decisions they have they make okay so let's hear from walchand institute so i will not accept this looking to the is explained in the text there what is been written in that text that the company is expecting something wrongly to support their product when i evaluate the product so that is what their basic intention it looks to be looking to their basic int intention a sincere and transparent person who is required to evaluate a product in a competitive market with the view that the product should be thoroughly evaluated which will give a definitely a chance for a com company if negative remarks are there to improve themselves in competitive market which is the basic role of consultant to be transparent 
looking to this role if i am been given a job as a hint with their clear cut intention to strongly support the product in prima facie i should reject it but as a second part you said that if the company is giving a dialogue to negotiate so that i should accept it if this condition exists with the dialogue of the superior of the company it is equally enough chance for a consultant like me to negotiate on certain my conditions the first condition is the transparent evaluation of existing product with my strong knowledge or whatever belief i can evaluate first the product during my evaluation if it is i am transparent company will definitely get appeal that this person is doing the correct thing irrespect of the something favored to him with this it gives a strong bond between these two and there will be belief in both the parties that this person can do something for the product based upon that the dialogue of negotiation start then if the benefit comes for a consultant like me definitely i want to groom my consultancy i will accept it later on so this can be a process of accepting the order or negotiating the order or denying the order at the end so result is not at in the control of the both the parties the so dialogue will finally will decide the outcome okay what is thank you so now again i'm going to reset the uh, hand raises and i would ask any center if there is at least one person who says yes i will accept and we want to hear those arguments as well it's very important to hear both the sides of the argument so that uh, whenever people take a decision they take it little more informed way and after giving a little more thought so i'm going to reset the hand raises so if there is any center in which there are people who feel that yes they should accept but uh, do it in certain way or whatever it is okay so if there are anybody who is saying yes please hand raise okay we have rajaram bapu do you have a an answer yes there there is a possibility of a long term association uh, that part i will not allow it to uh, have an influence on my research because i am a researcher i should be able to do my work without anything uh, having an impact on my work so i will evaluate the product if i feel the product is good i will tell them accordingly if i feel it is not good uh, i will tell them that the product is not good and my evaluation is negative i will not allow what whatever essay say to uh, cloud my judgment because you had already mentioned that there will be a lot of assignments which will come with a rider like this so you have to be very true to your work and uh, do your work very honest Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So the I'll just repeat if I've got it right. So the argument here is yes, I will take this, but I will definitely not commit to a long-term thing. Uh, I will evaluate and see for myself, and if it's worthwhile, I'll continue. Which is also a good uh, point. So this is why I wanted people to have both the uh, answers. Now let's go to uh, Bannari Amman uh, Institute of Technology. and from my point of view i will conduct a, a fair research and submit it just to the company and, and that research would be a proprietary of the company because the company is a, uh, uh, providing uh, the funds to conduct the research and in that uh, the research is submitted to the company my name would not be there so the company should not claim any undue benefit from that they can publish the research on their own risk to the market okay 
I am just restating your argument to others because he is going to take the research, yes he is going to take it, but he is going to transfer all the knowledge that comes out of it to the company and the company if they, if at all they use it, they will be using the knowledge and not his name. So, that way the, uh, there is no, nothing that uh, he is being used to promote a particular product. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Rai Sony College of Engineering. Uh, yeah, my answer would be yes, uh, because the opportunity does not come uh, often. So, I would use this opportunity to get grant for my institution and I will put, of course, I will put uh, conditions to it. Uh, if you, they are using my uh, name uh, for promoting their product, because it will be very difficult for uh, me to control what they are communicating in the market, because the product is new. So, uh, it should not happen that uh, they should use my name and uh, misguide uh, customers. Uh, so, I will put conditions and of course, I will uh, take up this opportunity and it will be good for my institution. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we will go to MES Pillai Institute of Information. But our answer is that yes, we will take uh, the project because he has just given a hint and we can make it clear at the beginning that whatever will be the results of our research will be given and we will be able to influence to our results and on the quality of the project. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. So, um, can you repeat the last sentence? Uh, what is the reason that you will take it up? No, sir, we, because he has just given a hint that he, if we are strongly supporting him, to give a favorable results, we can clarify at the beginning only that whatever will be the results and research from the research has to be accepted by him and he cannot influence on us. Okay, so I will repeat it, MES college thinks that they should accept it, the reason being that it is only a small hint and at the outset before doing the research, they will make it clear to the company that whatever be the outcome, they should accept it and they should not expect that the results that come out will be favorable. But they have also put a clause, okay, they are putting actually a small fish now, right. Now, they say that uh, the first year we will give you 5 lakh rupees. Now, if we think the research is uh, interesting to us, then the next year we will give you 1 crore rupee to buy this costly instrument. Okay. Now, what will you do? Happy with our research after one year, we can discontinue, uh, at, uh, we will maintain our ethics and we will not do anything wrong. Okay. So, you will not take up the research after one year, but one year you will take it and do the research and uh, yeah, report whatever you find. find okay, thank you. Kungu Engineering College, I am repeating the question, just hold on, wait for me to finish. The question is, will you or will you not accept such a kind of proposal from the company? Sir, I will not accept uh, such a proposal, sir. Okay, Hello? I, I had expected that you will all say yes. Okay. So, this is an exercise which you have to read and write. Okay. So, what we will do now, so there is anyway break coming up in the next couple of minutes. So, uh, use this break as well as some time now to read this whole paragraph. Okay. Assume that this paragraph is coming from a paper okay, and you are going to work on some area in which you are going to use this paper, which means that the whole of this paragraph you need to write in two lines and say that in bracket you will put this work has been done by this person. So, two lines, you, I want you to summarize this paragraph in about two lines, one or two lines, three lines is okay, not the whole thing. A couple of lines you have to rewrite this paragraph okay, as a summary, all right. So, I will, what you need to do is write it and you have to exchange your notes with your neighbor. Okay? 
please write it take we will come back in another uh, 10 minutes which is including your tea break plus this exercise. You have to write this and share your copy with your neighbor and take their copy with you and then we will continue with the exercise. Okay, so, we will come back in 10 minutes from now. Thank you very much. Okay, so, Devi Ahilya University, can you read at least one response? You do not have to tell from whom it came, just read one response in which uh, sentences or phrases have been used identically to the original work. I have summarized the paragraph and I will read it as Rosemite has been preserved as a tourist destination where people can visit and appreciate the natural beauty. They are not allowed to settle for longer visit and experience natural beauty. Okay. So, what do you think has been, uh, which sentences ha are common with the original work, which sentences or phrases are common to the original work? Okay, we will go to the next college, Thakur College. Yosemite is a park like paradise with beautiful sceneries. It is having a metal fence to protect from intruders, but visitors would be interested to be a part of this nature's gift. That is the summary of that paragraph given. Okay, what are the phrases that are identical to the original? How many phrases were identical? Uh, none. None. Zero. So, no, so then you do not raise your hands. I am going to reset it again. My question as follows. There has to be at least two phrases which are identical to the original. Only then please raise your hands. Please do not raise your hands otherwise. I want to see the extent of commonality between what somebody has written now to what was given in the original work. So, please do not raise your hands unless you have significant overlap. KCE Society, Jalgaon, please tell us first how many phrases are identical. Uh, sir, uh, I have used similar words, not exactly the phrases. The uh, like uh, masterpiece stands for outstanding example, whereas uh, intruder stands for uh, invader and the footprint stands for uh, footmark. So, the description is like Yosemite Park is an outstanding example of nature uh, with and having boundaries surrounded by a guilt where a tourist who is an invader is only allowed to take pictures and what left behind is only the footmarks. Okay. Okay, let me ask. So, Kavi Kulguru Institute of Technology. I have some words which are identical to the original work. Yasamite Park, Jill Tourist. These are fine. So, using uh, proper nouns like Yosemite Park, Tourists, Jilt Frame, they are all uh, nouns and not necessarily it will, you cannot find the equivalent, oh, which is fine. I am Pratima sir, RBS, from RBS Engineering Technical Campus, Bichpuri, Agra. And uh, as far as my summary of this passage is concerned, uh, I, will, I would like to say nature is a paradise where we are intruders. These are the phrases that I have taken from the actual paragraph, original paragraph. And I would like to say that uh, the writer wanted to say that nature is a gift given to us by God. And that's why it is a paradise. But uh, we as human beings are intruders because we are playing with nature. And uh, uh, we are not caring for nature. Uh, to uh, make the students aware, that plagiarism is not acceptable and uh, they should rewrite almost every phrase of the sentence except possibly to keep the uh, technical phrases like for example, if there was a um, technical definition and then that definition has got a couple of words which are phrases has to come only in that particular way that is okay. 
but not more than a couple of such um, definitions can be used as such. So, what we ask our own students to do is to write these things, we give them a technical paragraph and ask them to rewrite it, so that uh, they are aware of what plagiarism is. So, plagiarism is essentially something which is does not come so naturally in our uh, school curriculum. So, students are generally not aware of it, even when they do a project, school projects, before they come to colleges when they do school projects. Nowadays, if you ask them to write something, they just go to Wikipedia and download that and uh, do not even bother to rewrite, forget about understanding that, they just copy it and uh, present it as a project or a presentation or whatever. So, uh, it is not even uh, not there in the school level, but at least at the uh, college level, it is our responsibility to tell students uh, what plagiarism is and how to avoid them, how to rewrite sentences and uh, using examples like this. This is the reason why we took this very general example is most of you can work on this very broad topic instead of taking a particular subject, but usually in your own classes you might be dealing with people of uh, a similar discipline. Like in IIT Bombay, the way we conduct this uh, communication skill course is each department has got their own instructor for communication skills. Now, uh, I am a faculty in chemical engineering and there are other faculty in other engineering disciplines and science disciplines. Now, we are not trained professionally to in uh, English literature and it is not only people who are trained in English literature take communication skills in IIT Bombay. In IIT Bombay, many of the faculty who take communication skills are people from their respective disciplines. So, I am from chemical engineering, when I give assignments to my students, I take examples from chemical engineering literature and ask them to write it and work on it. So, similarly, we, you should encourage your students who work on uh, that particular area to pick up, you have to give them assignments just as the way we gave you assignments in different uh, disciplines. You ask them to take any one particular discipline and then ask them to rewrite a paragraph as a summary, maybe an abstract as a rewritten uh, summary. Okay. So, that is the importance of making plagiarism aware. Uh, what I will do now is again reset my uh, hand raise and allow people to express their opinion, uh, raise question and we will have a small discussion about uh, plagiarism, how you have encountered plagiarism in students, how you think it can be avoided and so on. So, let me just reset the counters, reset the hand raises. So, University BDT College of Engineering. So, let us know your opinion on plagiarism among students and what steps you have taken to uh, educate them about plagiarism. Actually, in our undergraduate and postgraduate course, we have uh, reports, project reports. They initially, they submit it and we go through and then we point out where they are uh, likely to indulge in plagiarism and then we ask them to revise it and we will do it for some two, three iterations and by that time uh, it will reach us a level where it is fairly good. I do not say that it is completely foolproof and then we pass it on. So, how do you identify that something has been plagiarized? Nowadays in the internet there are so many sources that they could have taken the uh, uh, material from. Uh, right sir, actually in our uh, university, uh, they uh, the MTech report submitted, they are subjected to uh, plagiarism check through software, turn it or turn it software they subject it to and they have allowed certain percentage, though it is not uh, correct because even 1 percent plagiarism is also not allowed, but at under at uh, especially at postgraduate course they have allowed certain percentage, they check it and if it is well within that limit they will pass it on, otherwise the thesis will be again asked for resubmission with some penal fee. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Symbiosis Institute of Computer Studies. Yeah, I have a question that what percent of plagiarism is allowed and what are the different free tools, is any free tools available? If not, uh, what are the other tools, uh, which one is best, best tool for plagiarism? Okay. 
So, I will repeat your question for the benefit of others. Uh, what are the tools, uh, free tools and paid tools available? And uh, in these tools, what are the um, uh, allowed percentage of uh, plagiarism? Now, firstly, let me answer the uh, tools. In plagiarism, uh, IIT Bombay uses uh, Turnitin, as some of you also have pointed out. Uh, we find the Turnitin to be very comprehensive. Uh, there are also uh, several uh, free websites like plagiarismchecker.com and a few other sites. If you just search for plagiarism checker on Google, you will find. But they are limited in the sense that amount of uh, uh, text that you can type is something like 1000 words or something. And uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, text that they compare with is not sufficient. Like the way Turnitin has got a huge database of uh, documents to compare with, uh, we have not found any other uh, source which is as good. Uh, maybe there are new things which have come up, but uh, I am not aware of anything. If anybody has uh, uh, any such information, I would like you to share it with all of us. Now, coming to your second question, so what is the percentage of plagiarism? So, this is again subjective. Uh, what we can say is what is too bad? Uh, I would say something more than 20 percent is really bad. And uh, what is very good? Uh, you cannot say 1 percent or 5 percent is good. Maybe 2 percent is good, maybe 7 percent is also good. So, um, really good you can say below 5 or 7 percent is really good and uh, about 20 percent is really bad. Now, between uh, 5 percent and 20 percent, again uh, my uh, opinion is based on Turnitin outputs and uh, any other plagiarism checker could define it in a different way. So, uh, please uh, use this with a rider that whatever I am saying is with respect to Turnitin. So, between 5 and 20 percent, it is subjective, you have to decide. You have to go there manually and look at what are the kind of uh, sentences that are copied. Now, what happens in, in Turnitin is that by default, it copies even the bibliographic references. If the references are identical in your work, certainly it will be identical in some other work that cannot be changed. So, by default, Turnitin is going to say that that is copied. So, you have to manually tell that do not check for uh, bibliographic information. Even then you might find 10 to 15 percent uh, copied. If you go and then you need to actually go and look at it, what is it that is being copied. Sometimes even if you turn off uh, bibliographic, it still uh, finds it out. So, software is not perfect. So, between this 5 percent and 20 percent, we need uh, humans to uh, take a judgmental call whether it is real plagiarism or it is just some software problem. Now, um, the question is how do we prevent? So, it is not, yeah, the, see as I was saying the in Indian uh, school education itself, these things should have been uh, brought up. So, unfortunately, students do not know about the value of creating something original. So, the first thing that we need to uh, tell them is what is your own contribution that is what is valued. So, we have to tell them in a positive way they are all uh, young minds, they are just most of them are just not aware of what it is, they are all used to copying in an easy way, they just do not know that it is wrong. So, first thing what we need to do is to tell them that this is not acceptable, this is not considered good practice. Okay. So, tell them the benefits of doing uh, what is uh, uh, their own uh, contribution, what is original contribution and say that. And then of course, we will have uh, strict measures for copying. So, you need to be very strict if you find somebody who is copying. Like for example, in IIT Bombay, if we find somebody who copies 
in one exam say uh, one quiz a small exam in the whole semester which might carry only 5 marks or 10 marks of the end sem the person is failed for the entire semester ok. So, if they find that they copy an assignment home assignment they are failed for the entire semester. So, one thing is to make them aware that it is it is not good to copy that originality is what is valued first them make it aware and of course, then you also implement it in a very strict way. Your uh, academic program should be very strong in saying that anybody found copying will be completely failed for that subject and you have to be very strict on that without any bias to any one person a girl or somebody is handicapped or somebody is sick and that is what they kept it none of that should count. If you follow that strictly with couple of batches slowly they will also begin to appreciate the value of originality that is the only way we can inculcate unfortunately it has not been done in the school education. Does that answer your question? So, uh, let me go to Vishwa Jyoti College of Engineering. Sentence it has combination of two or three keywords when checking the plagiarism whether it comes under the plagiarism or not. So, let me repeat the question for the benefit of others. When you are writing a sentence and you have to use keywords, now if there are more than two to three keywords, does it amount to plagiarism or not? Now, the, again this is uh, very subjective and depends on the context. Now, with certain technical uh, definitions or technical keywords, there may not be any equivalent synonyms. So, if there are no equivalent synonyms, it is ok and it is a must that you should use the original definitions. Like for example, there is a physical uh, concept. Now, that physical concept let us say it is weight of a body. Now, instead of weight you cannot use mass because weight and mass are two different things. They might mean similar, but they are not exactly the same ok. So, in certain uh, you need to take a call if there are no equivalent synonyms especially with technical keywords you should not use you can use the same word. Now, different plagiarism checkers allow you to use the extent of plagiarism what what constitutes a plagiarism is it three words is it four words is it five words you can define that. So, normally about three words to four words is considered ok because within three words you will have only one or two keywords. Only when you go to four or five words, you will have other words which have um, synonyms will come inside. So, therefore, if you keep your limit as about three words is acceptable, then you will see that four words, five words only come up in your extent of plagiarism. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay. Thank you very much if it is a home assignment if you give uh, 10 different questions to 10 different people uh, if it is a small class it is ok for a large class how many variations can you give in an assignment this is see this is a way that you can uh, one small way you can but more importantly we need to inculcate that plagiarism is bad they should feel that it is bad and not do it that is more important. Like for example, if you go to schools and colleges in the western countries in developed countries, even if you copy a small phrase, you are kind of uh, severely penalized for that. Even a home assignment, school assignment, I am not talking about project reports, small school, school assignments, if you copy from Wikipedia or if you copy from your neighbor, it is considered very, very bad. Unfortunately, in our culture, that has not gone through the students, we consider it ok to copy. It is very important that we inculcate uh, the ethics in the students that it is just not acceptable, that it is just not good. 
Of course, there are means to prevent it like what you said, but that is very difficult logistically when you have large classes. You cannot be correcting 100 different questions and if it is a home assignment, if they had copied from uh, Wikipedia, how will you go and check 100 different questions from Wikipedia? So, yes, so that is the point. So, like uh, here we have two classes of 60, 60 each. So, normally we can do plagiarism test if they have copied from internet. But normally what happens is say one student created an assignment and at least four to five will copy maybe from other class. So, how do we monitor that? Yes, so, so depends on the nature of assignment if it is a uh, project, if you are able to when you are correcting that you can uh, exchange suppose you, you take one uh, 60 batch students and your uh, friend takes another 60 batch of students, you can exchange uh, papers randomly and then check. This is all offline I am saying, but if it is online like uh, Turnitin the example that I said, Turnitin allows you to compare not only among uh, what is there available in internet, but also among a class. So, it uh, uh, allows you to compare submissions across a class, across this class and previous class, maybe last year you took and across things that are available in the internet. So, once it is electronic, it is very easy, but of course, offline methods it is uh, slightly uh, tedious and it is difficult to catch hold of this. As I said, the best way here is to do a positive and a proactive thing inculcating the spirit of uh, not acceptability in the students that this is not good. Just as they will say that is it okay to go and kill your neighbor. None of us feel that killing a neighbor is uh, okay because we have inculcated in, um, in us saying that that is bad. So, similarly we need to inculcate this uh, spirit of no copying is what is desirable. Okay, so uh, let me uh, stop this topic and then go to the next topic.